part two of the Declaration of Independence here. So, in this section, we're actually going to talk about some of the detailed information that were grievances, as well as why they were important to be grievances, and compare them to some of the modern dissertation and discourse about protesting in the United States. So, when we look at the first three complaints in the Declaration of Independence, all three of them revolve around King Charles refusing to allow laws for public safety and well-being to be passed, enacted, or brought forward to him for passing in their entirety. The first one, he has refused to assent to laws the most wholesome and necessary for the public good. The second one, he has forbidden his governors to pass laws of immediate and pressing importance unless suspended in their operation till his assent. And then the third one is, he has refused to pass uh, other laws for the accommodation of large districts of people unless those people would relinquish their rights to representation in the legislation. So compared to most of what these protesters slash rioters are talking about, which are not agreeing with political viewpoints, thinking that they're going to be oppressed because they won't get X for free, Y for free, or Z for free, thinking that they have the right to push the country into socialism or communism, these pale in comparison to the charges against King Charles and what caused the movement of 1776 and the war for independence of the United States. But let's keep going here. Maybe some of these are a little more flaky. Uh, the next few deal with him altering and manipulating the process of legislators. Uh, one example is here, he has called together legislative bodies at places unusual, uncomfortable, and distant from the depository of their public records for the sole purpose of fatiguing them into compliance with his prescribed measures. What does that mean, really? Well, what that means is that he took them and moved them to some location that wasn't the legislative body hall and then kept them there and browbeat them and bully pulpited them just like a lot of these anti-fascists are doing at people until they consented to whatever law he wanted. He dissolved uh, representative houses he refused to allow new elected delegations to form up or caused uh, legislative bodies into action during recess when delegates had very long travel times to return to the delegation house. Uh, he also obstructed laws of naturalization of foreigners, which are immigration laws, people. But not just immigration laws like what some people are yelling about Trump doing, which was a temporary moratorium of people entering on visas from a handful of countries. No, he was restricting all immigration from the entire world. He also obstructed... In the, uh, in the appointment of judiciary powers, which meant he refused to appoint judges or appointed people who had paid him to become judges. Uh, he made judges dependent upon his will and tenure for office by putting their, uh, their pay and tenure policies directly under his assent and not under the parliamentary assent. Uh, he erected a multitude of new offices and sent swarms of officers to harass people, meaning he created new public departments and new policies and regulations, and then, cr and then hired people from England, sent them to the New World to staff these offices and start enforcing these new regulatory powers. Sounds an awful lot like what the EPA and the BLM and some of these other things were doing under President Obama. He 
affected to render the military independent of civil authorities within the uh, colonies, which basically meant the king took direct control of the military in the colonies and not the governors or legislative bodies in the colonies themselves, who could better determine what needed to be done by military action. Uh, he has combined with others to subjugate us to jurisdictions foreign to our constitution and acknowledgement of our laws given his assent to the acts of pretend legislation. Uh, he failed to protect citizens from mock trials and punishment for any murders which they should commit on the, on the inhabitants of those states. Uh, for cutting off trade with all other parts of the world, for imposing taxation without representative consent, for depriving many citizens for, of trial by jury. What does that mean? That means he made a summary judgment and punished them directly without any judicial process. Uh, transporting us beyond seas to be tried for pretend offenses. That meant he was taking people who disagreed with him, arresting them, sending them back to Europe, and then trying them in London on things other than them dissenting on the king's will. Uh, abolished the common uh, association of of uh, English laws known as Commonwealth law practice. He abolished them completely, created new boundaries of new territories and new colonies, uh, took away charters of colonies, suspended legislatures. Uh, he abdicated governing and then declared war on some colonies. He, uh, he gave writs of operation for privateering on the American coasts. Privateering is a fancy word for piracy. That meant he basically gave state-sponsored piracy to certain captains to perform on the colonies to increase his wealth. Transported large armies of mercenaries onto American colony soils. Uh, constrained our fellow citizens to be taken captive on the high seas and bear arms against their own country and crew members. Also made them act as executioners for those crew members that would not be forced into military service. Uh, excited domestic insurrections amongst the citizenry as well as amongst the native populations read American Indians he paid American Indian tribes to attack colonies uh, these were all things that King Charles did and yet some of these anti-fascists and some of these anarcho-communists want you to think that what they're experiencing in this country is akin to what we went through before the revolution started. Now, I've seen most of Europe, including areas of Eastern Europe that used to be former Soviet Union. I saw some of these places in the end of the 90s, beginning of the 2000s, when there were civil wars still going on there, and there are new civil wars breaking out now even those places weren't as bad as some of these complaints in the Declaration of Independence. And they were under civil war. We in this country have not devolved to the point where we need an armed rebellion of this nature. And I think some of these people from these anti-fascist groups are going to come to the realization that their sociology majors are not going to protect them from the 3% veterans who still maintain arms and maintain skills for combat zones and have not relinquished our oath 
to defend this country against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. Well, this is part two of the Declaration of Independence. I will include a link to a downloadable content from Amazon for ebook readers. So if you wish to read the Declaration of Independence in its entirety, you can go ahead and click the link in the description, and you should be able to find it just fine. I'm also going to start including the link for my Minds account, where you can go and comment and interact with me directly. Minds is very akin to Twitter. So please sign up and subscribe. Also subscribe to my YouTube channel here. Thank you all very much, and good night.